I haven't done a video in about a year and I've uh, been trying to get together the stuff for my house and build a couple things on the side and side jobs and trucks been doing but uh, I want to do a tour of my basement sort of shop and some stuff I've restored this is a 40s I guess a 48 closing model 100 this I bought for $50 in pieces completely took apart the only thing that wasn't took apart was the bed was not off of it i mean the carriage was not off of the machine and the headstock was not off but everything inside the headstock was completely took apart i bought this off my boss's son i had to make some parts for it the gibbs in here i had to make this gib I ended up finding this gib shoved in here down toward the bottom for some reason. This chuck was stuck. I took a quarter inch impact and finally got it to break loose and it rolled out, rolled back and forth, rolled out, rolled back and forth, and it finally come apart. This lever is still stuck. It, I, it was working when it was in the building, but I don't know why, but it got stuck again. That's for the back gears. And it needs a pin right here. So I just used a nail. The insides, it is a three-speed belt drive, which you can see the threading gears and the back gears. That looks like it's got teeth broken off, and it does, but it does not affect it at all. It works fine. And that's the little clutch. It's got a friction clutch. You turn that knob, and it has like a little shoes come out and contact this like a brake drum. And this is the, to engage the thread gears. This is the switch I built for it. It didn't have one when I got it. So I put that on. Here's the thread box. It does work, except this machine is missing one part. I do have that gear. I do have that one. It needs an idler gear, exactly like that one to sit right there. For some reason, it's missing. But everything in here, everything in here moves. That's to disengage to what speed you want the power feed gears in. Everything on the carriage does work. Actually, this crossfeed nut is brand new. It was missing that. It cost me $50 just to get the nut. Actually, I think it was $58. The previous owner, my son's or my, my owner's son, rebuilt the back of the tailstock. It still needs to be trimmed in place. The bottom, I have not finished painting it. It is still green on the inside. It was, hey, it looks like poop. I don't like it. That's the way the whole machine was painted. It was that kind of green. I looked up pictures. They was originally gray. And he didn't know what kind of lathe it was. So I figured out it was a closing from a bunch of older pictures. And that's how I figured out what nut to buy. This has a... Three quarter ten Acme. Left handed. It's really hard to find though the nut. But it is in there. Way up in the back. I still need this little shield that goes right here. You can sort of see where it's stepped up for it. Which I'll just I'll build that. It does move real free. It does run. The original motor was a one horse three phase, but I've turned it over to a one horse 110 with electric brake. But. The funny thing about it is, I built that gearbox system that is a two speed forward, one reverse uh, out of a lawnmower. And that is an air compressor motor. 
actually turns 2,000 some RPMs. You really need a 1750 RPM for this. So that cuts it down to the RPM range. And I got, it's actually got one forward for this and two reverses. That's how it sort of worked out. And it pivots on this belt system. This is actually factory. It used to just have the motor sit right there and then the belt would come down and it would just go up and down. But the windings on the inside of the motor were chewed to pieces for some reason. It took me about three weeks to restore this. Just afternoons, one or two hours. And had it restored and used it a long time. This is the wrong tool holder. If y'all have watched my previous videos, this is the tool holder off of my little MCO. It still works. It's just got a bunch of junk on it. I need the bigger one. I'm going to get the one that has the two slides that come down and the handle. They call it an Allura. And put it on there. This is a three jaw Atlas chuck. Because some time, some years, some something in between closing and atlas like merged. I'm guessing this is like the beginning of it because that is an atlas chuck. It does have uh, one and a half eight, I think one and a quarter eight or one and a half eight Acme. It's the screws on. You just take a hammer and a piece of aluminum and tap it, and it'll screw off. I do have a bigger four jaw. This is a closing model 108 inch swing. I can put an 8 inch chuck on it. And uh, a guy at work actually gave me one. This is made in New England. That's off a of South Bend. Has a backing plate. I'm going to take the backing plate off. Buy another one, true it up with this, slide it on, and get it on the inside of the ID bore of the chuck transfer punch it and put it on. But the backing plate is sixty dollars and I haven't really fooled with it yet. But uh we'll just call this a lathe video, not a shop tour video in my basement yet. But I uh, hope y'all like it.